Okay, so good morning, good afternoon. Welcome to the Unique Community Hours, uh, January edition. My name is Raul Osuna. I am one of the release engineers for Uni. And uh, yeah, I'm glad to be presenting today. So the agenda, uh, first top topic will be uh, the migration away from this tool from Microsoft Teams. Uh, Later on, I will talk about what is new in the upcoming Uyuni release. And then we are going to have at least two uh, uh, sessions from Jan. Uh, one regarding the bash completion for the Spacewalk CLI tools that he did for the Hack Week, and another one for the Minima Mirror for Devs, a hybrid model for limited disk space. And Pablo's sessions about um, Uyuni Health Check. Uh, we might need to skip it because uh, he got an unscheduled conflicting meeting. So in case he cannot make it, make it on time, we will postpone it for the next edition. So without, without further ado, let's get started. So the first topic is the migration away from Microsoft Teams. So uh, we are using, as you know, Microsoft Teams for these meetings. Uh, for an open source product, um, it doesn't match very well uh, uh, having open source solutions to to give presentations and to organize meetings. So uh, this is the last meeting that is happening on Microsoft Teams. Uh, where are we going? Uh, we cannot announce yet, but uh, we have pushed very hard to have an open source uh, tool. And I believe that uh, we are very close to, to having the solution. Uh, we'll be sharing new calendar appointments, links, and instructions in the mailing list. Uh, so yes, uh, stay relaxed. You will know on time for the next uh, community hours that will be on the uh, last Friday of February. So yes, uh, for the people joining now, we are moving away from Teams uh, and we will share uh, more detailed information in the mailing list. Is uh, is there any question? Uh, anything you think I missed uh, sharing? Or okay, it doesn't look like. So uh, if you think of anything, you can uh, ask as well in at the at the end of the meeting in the Q and A. So the next point is you need twenty four oh one. What's new? So yes, we are going to have a, a new release uh, next week, uh, before the hopefully before the end of January, uh, unless uh, anything breaks uh, last minute, which doesn't seem to be the case. And the additions for this release is that finally I had already announced that OpenOila 2203 uh, was a supported product for Uni. But there were always some missing pieces to, to have it, for example, in the documentation announced um, officially. And uh, the thing that was not uh, uh, fully integrated is that we were using uh, the client tools, so the Sol bundle. We were using a specific version for uh, OpenOila, uh, but this operating system is very similar to any other enterprise Linux, Linux 8. So having a special uh, uni client tools was not very uh, sustainable. That meant extra work for uh, everyone to maintain. And uh, we managed to uh, make the uh, Enterprise Linux 8 uni client tools work uh, with OpenOila. So it doesn't need its uh, own uh, package. So this is great news, especially for us, uh, release engineers. Uh, so now we will release the documentation with all the instructions and, and you will have OpenOila ready. And the second big uh, addition for this release is going to be the reboot flag for non-SUSE distributions. So this is about, uh, for for example, for OpenSUSE lib systems, uh, when there is a patch that needs a reboot, uh, a reboot like the kernel or something like this, uh, you get a a flag in the web UI telling you that uh, this uh, system needs a reboot. But this feature was missing for uh, other clients uh, that are not uh, 
from SUSE family. And this feature was requested by the community uh, pretty hard. So uh, finally, this is uh, integrated and I, I hope you find this a, a good ad addition. Is there any other question, any question you would have about the new uni release? Okay, doesn't look like. So then we can go with Jan uh, to present uh, the first of his two sessions. So Jan, if you are ready. Thanks, Raul. Yes, uh, let me take over and share my screen quickly. Oops, sorry, I think. Um, Oh yeah, it's been a while since I did it on Teams. <laughs> okay, now you should be able to see my screen, hopefully. So yes, uh, have, hi everyone. My name is Jan, and I'm a software developer for Uyuni and Sousa Manager. And yeah, today uh, Jan, I have. Sorry, we yeah, see the, the wrong screen. We see Teams. Yeah, yeah sure. sure. Um, okay, yes, let's. Start with this one. Okay, so today I have two sessions. Both are quick, hopefully. So first one is the um, bash completion for um, some of the spacewalk to um, Uyuni command line tools we have, and the covered tools are listed here. And these five most commonly used tools um, are now supported in bash with auto completion. I'm going to show you a quick demo about that. Um, it's actually a subtle feature, but um, Surely it comes really handy in um, if you are using these tools continuously. Um, especially um, the the important thing here is this uh, auto completion is working on dynamic content as well. So um, if I go ahead and um, show you some examples, let's start with um, spacewalk common channels, for example, one of the tools mostly used fits in. We, we uni. So and can with you any... make the phone bigger, please? Yes. Is it enough right now? Yes. So um, <clears throat> if you look at the help text, um, the auto completion is supported with any of the options here and also any of the subcommands with some of the tools. And yeah, the thing I especially want to show you is to use this with some dynamic uh, content. So let's try to um, show something um, that uses, for example, um, some of the options here. And of course, if, you, if you're if you familiar with the tool, this um, takes a channel label, um, uh, which is uh, available in the, in the tools configuration. And all these labels are also auto-completed as well. So let's, if, we, if I start with, like, Usually, I would start with the username and password. And then next thing I would need probably is the architecture. So here, if you um, try the completion with double tab, um, it shows you of the available arches. And yeah, you don't need to remember this by heart. And yeah, once I'm done with my options, there's the next one is a positional argument that takes a channel label glob, uh, multiple actually. So for this, um, let's think about, okay, let's try to add some Alma Linux channels, for example. If I start with Alma and try the completion, um, it shows me all the Alma Linux channel, all the channels that start with the text I input. And so yeah, you can Basically, um, let's do Alma Linux 9 and Alma Linux 9 at screen, for example. And yeah, as you know, also um, this tool supports um, shell style wildcards. Like I can use this as well. So if I go ahead and use this, it'll create all the um, channels I, I, I input here. And another example could be um, with the MGR sync tool. Um, you can see in this one, it shows you all the subcommands that the tool has. Um, to add, and the next is next word is either products, channels, and, and credentials. And yeah, this is basically it about this. Um, 
like I said, every every option and every command uh, visible in the help text are supported. And yeah, it should be, I'm not exactly sure since which version we have this, but I think the last, at least the last um, latest version has this. And it should be installed automatically when you update, um, if I'm not mistaken. So feel free to give it a try. Um, any questions so far? Okay, so in that case, I will switch to my other topic, which is more relevant for developers who are working um, on contributing Uyuni, actually. So um, if you're not, if you haven't haven't heard of this, um, this tool is called Minima, and we use this tool in our CI environment. Um, so the what it does is basically <clears throat> it downloads any online repository you specify to it and it will serve it from a simple Apache server um, for your development needs, whenever you need some repository mirrored for any purpose. Um, you know, if you're working with Uyuni, you probably uh, need to sync multiple repositories during development. So this is a tool to um, fasten up that process. The way we actually use it in CI is because um, if you use this tool, you don't need an active internet connection when running the test suites. Also, this protects us against some um, any temporary connection issues with any of the CDNs. And also, it saves us a lot of bandwidth um, between um, subsequent test suite runs. So um, we just um, download all the repositories we need once. And uh, it ha also has a cron job that updates these repositories. So whenever we run the test suite, we have um, all the up-to-date versions um, copied into the, the local network um, for any test suite runs. So the problem with this tool is um, <clears throat> the way it's integrated with SomaForm is it's kind of um, all of not all or nothing. So um, to run the full test suite, we need we need many many um, repositories synced, and that takes um, a lot of this space actually, more than two terabytes if I'm not mistaken. So it's not very plausible for a development machine. Um, so it, it's because it's it's to some of them. So when you specify this uh, a minimum mirror to um, be run, um, to be queried with uh, some form, then you need to have all the images and repositories available in this mirror so that some form and also we server can, can, can work. Um, I'm not going to go through <clears throat> how to set up, set this up. Um, it's, it's quite simple actually. Um, uh, I can share this uh, link to the GitHub repository. So there's um, some guide for configuring it. It's quite simple. Um, <clears throat> but basically, how you would use it together with SomaForm is um, we have an example definition of a mirror here, as you can see here. Um, so you basically um, specify it some, some, some disk volume um, big enough or uh, however big you can afford. Like uh, for in my instance, I have 900 something gigabytes, but yeah, you can easily do it it's um, 500 gigabytes or less even so this is how you um, specify um, so create a mirror and then the next step is to in your um, actual parts where you um, the, the base section of the summa form you just specify um, your um, the mirrors mirrors address basically to to let SumoForm know that all the repositories and images it needs are going to be served from this mirror instead. So um, this mirror can be used in two places. So once one is SumoForm itself, um, SumoForm will get try to get all the images that it needs and also the initial repositories it needs from this mirror. And the second place you can use it is inside of a Uni server. So um, whenever you need um, if you define this um, mirror in SOMO form, it'll also configure the Uyuni server when it creates to use this mirror. And from from then on, you can just um, add any custom repos any repository you want, um, giving it the mirror's address instead. So, <clears throat> like I said, the main problem here is the is the disk space. So this is as it is. It's not very useful for um, developers with um, limited um, disk space. So I came up with a 
easy hack, let's say, to um, make it work kind of selectively. So I set up um, some um, proxy rules for the Apache server inside of the mirror. So the way it's configured is if the repository is actually downloaded in the mirror, it will act, it will just go ahead and serve that. But if it's not, it will just, the proxy in the mirror will just forward the requests to the actual online repository. So this way you can just um, mirror only the repositories you need the most or most frequently, and then just forward the others um, straight to uh, the internet. So of course, if you use it like this, you would still need an active internet connection to make it work. But the problem it solves is mainly about the um, re reused um, internet when, whenever you sync the same repositories. And especially it's very useful if you are, don't have a very fast internet connection and you need to some, some UNI environment set up pretty quickly. So this would save you a lot of, um, a, really a lot of time. Um, okay, let me show you how I did it. Okay, so this is my mirror instance. Um, this mirror, the minima, has a single configuration file, um, usually um, stored here in each uh, etc minima yaml and here is a list of repositories that it's um, that i want it to download so all these repositories are being downloaded so i <clears throat> chose this repositories according of course according to how much disk space i have so you can have less or you can have more and the important part here is i enabled two um apache modules um with yeah they are enabled as um, one is the proxy module and then the other one is the proxy http module so they are already enabled since i have the configuration already set up but this is how you would enable those two modules and after you do this um, you need to create a configuration file for apache yes it's here this is my file for this and the yeah magic keyword here is the proxy pass so this allows um, Apache to forward any requests to a specific path a different server which is the original um, hosts of these um, channels for example you can see that I forwarded Alma Linux 9 and Rocky Linux 8 from here um, and then yeah whenever a request is made it made to this path it will just forward that request to um, this this URL. Um, if I, we look at this together with my other uh, minimal configuration file, you can see that the Alma Linux 9 is forwarded, but um, Alma Linux 8 is actually downloaded and 9 isn't. So um, basically in my setup, um, this mirror has Alma Linux 8 channels, but it doesn't have 9 but it's configured to forward those requests to nine um, to the to to an online repository. Um, if I try to show you the um, contents of this mirror, so I can go to Alma Linux and yeah, I can see 8.8 .8 is mirrored here, but nine is not available. So, um, but if you try to make a request to 9.2, Nine you can actually see that I can access this repository still if, if even though I haven't mirrored it. So if you um, notice that this is actually served from this URL, not the, not the local mirror. So uh, in this way, it's quite actually transparent to Sumoform and Uyuni. And yeah, you can just um, act like everything is synced inside of this mirror. So SumoForm won't complain if it's, it's any of the repositories are actually forwarded or downloaded anywhere. So yeah, this with this tool, I um, hope that it will be useful for developers as well. It, it saves me a lot of time. And yeah, if you if you come across a problem that you need to sync any repositories um, repeatedly, um, just feel free to give it a try. And yeah, I think I can have some questions if you have any. 
Okay, I don't see anything in the chat, but maybe somebody wants to ask live. Yes, there is a hand raised. Yes, uh, Miguel. Miguel. Okay, <clears throat> Jan, I, I'm, I'm loving this, really. It's simple, clean, nice, neat, and it manages everything very clearly. Um, there's one question just uh, out of thin air, okay? So don't, don't hit me for it. Um, could it be possible to implement the capability so that the target RPM or dev is only downloaded when a machine requests it? Uh, yes, actually the answer is yes. I, I, I tried it. Um, I set up an additional um, squid instance in the, in the mirror um, for caching. So, mm -hmm. um, and lazy retrieval. So this, this is of course all, all possible, but then um, you need to, for, for example, for caching, you need to um, set up the uh, invalidation rules um, very carefully because for example, it needs to be different for the metadata files and it needs to be different for RPM files. Yeah. But also lazy downloading is also possible, yes. Yeah, noted. Thanks, Jen. Welcome. Uh, any other questions? Okay, I guess that was it. So yeah, back to you, Ralph. Thank you, Jan. So back to where we were. And uh, next presentation is by Pablo, but as I already warned, uh, he won't be able to to present today. So we'll be uh, postponing it until the next edition. And with that, uh, today uh, it was um, a very long uh, session. Is there any anything missing from uh, my presentations uh, that you would like to ask, or maybe it's something that you thought about thought about after digesting Jan's presentations? Okay, doesn't seem to be the case. So last but not least, and as I always do, I, I would like uh, to encourage everyone uh, to present uh, at any uh, future edition of the Uni Community Hours. So we are always very happy about contributions or if you want to tell us what you're using Uni for or anything that you think is worth sharing. Uh, yeah, uh, yes, reach to me and I'll be happy to find a slot for you. Remember about my first announcement that uh, we will be sharing further information for the next edition. And with that, I think we can wrap up and call it a day. So thanks a lot, everyone, for attending. And hopefully see you uh, in the next edition next month. Thank you. Goodbye. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Bye.